in 1997 in a football game between France and Brazil. Robert Carlos, a young Brazilian player, kicked the ball and just before going out of bounds, the ball hooked to the left which is known as the banana kick. By Newton's first law, the ball is supposed to move in the same direction and velocity until an external force is applied to it. So what happened? Why did the ball swerve? It is actually Magnus Effect. Magnus Effect, first documented by Sir Isaac Newton in 1670 while playing a game of tennis. The effect is named after the German physicist Henrik Gustav Magnus 1852 as he made early studies of the lift on rotating bodies. This phenomenon of lift produced by rotation of a solid body is called the Magnus Effect. Magnus Effect is described as a phenomenon that is mainly characterized by a spinning object that is moving through a fluid wherein there is relative motion between the spinning body and the fluid. When the Magnus Effect takes place, the path of a spinning object is usually deflected in a way that is completely different from when the object is not spinning. The deflection that occurs can be described by the difference in pressure of the fluid that is present on the opposite sides of the spinning object. So how does Magnus Effect come into play in the banana kick? Carlos placed his kick at the lower right corner of the ball off-center, sending it high and to the right but also rotating around its axis. Air passing around the ball is not an ideal flow, but a real flow. Hence, boundary layers exist and there is boundary layer separation. By the way, the ball is considered a bluff body, which is a body that, as a result of its shape, has separated flow over a substantial part of its surface. Hence, there is flow separation around it. Next, a mysterious scientist will explain the concept in more detail. Because the kick was placed at the lower right corner of the ball, Magnus effect takes place on two axes, bottom to top and right to left. We will be talking more about the right to left one with the top view. Explanation. If the ball doesn't spin, the flow separates at point A and B, which are symmetrical. Hence, the pressure distribution is the same, and net force at right or left is zero. Flow separation occurs when the flow reverses. For example, at the point where du over dy is equal to zero. Since the ball spins with an angular speed, omega, because one is spinning against the airflow, flow reversal occurs earlier at A prime. Because 2 is spinning in the same direction as the airflow, flow reversal occurs later at B prime. How flow reversal works? The air velocity increases from the stagnation point and decreases after it reaches a maximum value. As velocity decreases, pressure increases by Bernoulli's equation and hence there is adverse pressure gradient against the flow from the right to left. Therefore, there is a force in the opposite direction of the flow. This causes deceleration of the flow. The velocity gradient of the flow near the surface eventually becomes zero and reverses. The anti-clockwise rotation and shift of separation points from A to A' prime and B to B' prime will lead to the pressure distribution to be as such. F is equal to PA, so since area is larger at 2, force at 2 will be greater than force at 1. Therefore, the ball curved towards 2. The asymmetric distribution led to a net force towards 2. We also tried to reproduce the kick in school. Now, let's look at the other application of this concept. Could Magnus effect be applied to a frisbee? A frisbee has a streamlined looking body. So, it's not the conventionally looking bluff body. If the frisbee is not angled, flow can be assumed as zero. But since a frisbee tends to be thrown at an angle, the separation point keeps changing. Hence, Magnus effect can still be applied. Here is a demonstration with a real life frisbee. Thank you guys for watching the video. This video was produced by Chloe, Sean, Jiaxing, Razin, Jingsheng, and Timothy.